So good morning then and welcome back to Thought for the Day. Today we're going to be looking at Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 26. But before we do that, we're going to commit our time to the Lord and pray. So let's, uh, let's pray. A loving Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we thank you again for your grace to us. We thank you, Lord, that as we uh, have begun this week, we've known your hand upon us. And we pray that even now, as we look at your word, that you would be pleased to speak into our lives that you would move us to uh, live for you in these days, for Jesus' sake. Amen. So Proverbs um, 15 and verse 26 reads like this. The Lord detests the thoughts of the wicked, but those of the pure are pleasing to him. So I don't think any of us uh, would be comfortable having our innermost thoughts displayed for all the world to see. We are are often inwardly moaning about situations that we face or grumbling about people that we find it hard to get on with or lusting over things or people and at times just simply being quite destructive and horrible. We would be ashamed should someone know what we are really thinking about. And this proverb makes it plain that God knows our thoughts, that he can read our minds uh, that should not surprise us, uh, after all, he is a sovereign God, uh, the all-knowing, the all-seeing, the all-powerful, the ever-present God. There is no reason why we should doubt, as it were, that he can uh, know what we're thinking, know uh, exactly what we're up to. Well, um, Hebrews helps us to understand that this is in fact the case. Hebrews 4, uh, 12 and 13 reminds us that uh, the word of God is powerful in our lives and it's powerful because God sees all things. It says this, for the word of the Lord is, act, is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So here is that understanding that uh, this is the God who knows all about our lives. He knows all about even what we think. Uh, so we cannot hide from him. Now the parable tells us that there are two camps of people who should care about that fact, that care about God's ability to know our thoughts. That is the camp of the wicked and the camp of the pure. Now what we know or what we uh, understand is that uh, that really encompasses all of humanity, doesn't it? For we all fit into uh, one of those ca categories or the other. And now sometimes we might find it easier to think in terms of frame of mind when we read this, uh, read this proverb. Sometimes I am wicked and sometimes I'm pure. You know, sometimes I get it right, sometimes I get it wrong. Uh, after all, we all chop and change according to our mood. Uh, this, however, is not what's being discussed here. It's not the issue. There are two types of people. One group has acknowledged that God is king. They have accepted his sovereignty. Uh, they have accepted his authority over their lives, and they are pleased to live for him, to make their days count for his glory. Uh, these are the pure. Uh, they are pure not because they do no wrong, uh, but because their faith in God uh, because of their faith in God, they have been cleansed and made right. The other group have no time for God. They accept no authority but their own. Uh, their lives are lived for themselves. They only do what pleases themselves. Uh, they may not hate God, or they might hate God, uh, but they certainly want nothing to do with him. Uh, this is the wicked group. Uh, they are the wicked because they have rejected God, because their lives are self-centred. Uh, they may have done very little in terms of what we would call uh, in-your-face evil, uh, but by their lives they show their contempt for God. Now this group can do nothing to please God. They have no faith. Even their good thoughts have nothing to commend them to God. Uh, they could be Nobel Peace Prize winners. They could um, have rescued kittens um, or save people from burning buildings. But in God's book, their thoughts are detestable. They're detestable because they want nothing to do with him. They want nothing to do with the God who is there. And Hebrews reminds us, Hebrews 11.6 reminds us that without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If you don't believe that he's there, if you don't trust him, if you have no desire to know him, then all that you do can 
uh, well, it can never please God. Uh, but the truth is, if we trust in him, if we understand that he is there, then we can uh, have that faith and there we can live for him. So the group that are pure, their thoughts are pleasing to God. Now, that might make you think that it, the Christians never do anything wrong or never think bad thoughts. Well, that's not what it's saying. What it means is that God is at work in this group to change and to transform them, to make them more like Christ, to make them more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and that work that God has begun in their lives, he will see through to completion. Uh, they are legally pure. So, as it were, the court case has happened and God has declared them righteous in his sight. And the righteousness of Christ is put to their account. Uh, but their sanctification is ongoing. What delights God as he sees the believer's thoughts are the growths in grace and the knowledge of Christ. The acknowledgement of sin and the repentance of it and the ongoing faith that is displayed in their grapplings to overcome sin. It's not that we are sinless if we trust in God, um, because we, can, we do carry on sinning, but the thing is God is at work and we begin to change over time, and our thoughts become acceptable to him, in fact are a delight to him, uh, because he sees the way that we are interacting with himself, and sees how uh, we are dealing with our sin. Uh, Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3 Paul writes and he says uh, to the believers there in Thessalonica we remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith your labor prompted by love and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ so that is the attitude of the heart of the uh, believer in the Lord Jesus Christ they are wanting to do what pleases him and then again in uh, 2 Thessalonians Paul writes to the same group of believers and he says this with this in mind we constantly pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may bring to fruition your every desire for goodness and your every deed prompted by faith you see when we trust in God our deeds our actions our thoughts all are being worked on by God to make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. So answer the question this morning, are your thoughts pleasing to God because he is at work in your life, or are they detestable to God because, well, he's not uh, even factoring in your life at this moment in time? Maybe you need to repent of your sin and seek him this day. Or maybe, as it were, you are a Christian and you're struggling in your walk and you need to turn back to God uh, confess the sin that is there and acknowledge uh, that he can transform and change you uh, all over afresh. Let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, as we've considered this proverb this morning, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for the way that you deal in people's lives and, Lord, that you transform them. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that it isn't dependent on what we do, but, Lord, we thank you that once we have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sin, then our lives count and are pleasing in your sight. And so we thank you for that this morning. Help us to go out and to live by faith. And we ask it for Jesus' sake. Amen.